Hey, fifth grade, happy Wednesday. This is Ms. Gibson coming to you again with your reading class for today. So again, when we do reading now, from now on, you should always have, of course, this YouTube video up, the reading packet that states the date, the link that goes to the, the book that we're reading, which is But Not Buddy, and then, of course, the stop and jot and ticket Google form, okay? So on this, it also gives you the link again, to the book, and then what pages we're going to be reading, and of course, what you will need in order to be successful in today's class and to follow along in your discussion. So go ahead and pause the video and make sure you have all three of these tabs open for today. Yes, you can start right to chapter two because that's what we'll be beginning for today. So go ahead and pause the video and get those things together. All right, so today during our um, le class lesson, we are going to be tracking what we, what we are learning about our main character, Bud, through different interactions he's having with other characters in the story. So right now in this chapter, that's what we will be doing. We'll be tracking these interactions he's having and what we can learn about him as a main character and how his life has now been going. Now, before we jump into chapter two, I first want us to recap about chapter one. So what did we learn in chapter one about Bud and his life right now? Exactly. So we know that Bud is 10 years old. His mom died when he was six. He also is now moving to a new home or a new foster family named, named the um, a Moses. And they have the two parents and their son, a 12-year-old son named Todd. So now we're going to get into this second chapter and learn about what's going on next. So make sure you're on chapter two. Okay, so as we begin, we're going to read the beginning pages together, okay? So as we're reading right now, we should be tracking again those interactions that Bud is now having and what we can learn from them before we get into the first stop and jot. So let's start reading. We're going to read from the bottom of page five. So again, this is what's telling us what the page is and what page we're on for chapter two. And then we're going to read page five, six, and stop after this rule on page seven. Okay, so follow along as I read aloud. Chapter two, there comes a time when you're losing a fight that it just doesn't make sense to keep on fighting. It's not that you're being a quitter. It's just that you've got the sense to know when enough is enough. I was having this thought because Todd Amos was hitting me so hard and fast that I knew that the blood squirting out of my nose was only the beginning of a whole long list of bad things that were about to happen to me. Todd's next punch crashed into the side of my ear and I fell on the floor and pulled my knees up to my chest and crossed my arms in front of my head like a turtle in a shell. I started scooching toward the bed, hoping I can get under it. Todd started kicking me, but, but his slippers couldn't hut me near as much as his fist had. The bedroom door opened and his mother, Mrs. Amos, came in. It seemed like she was having a hard time figuring out what was going on because Todd's right leg got tired from kicking me and he switched over to his left one while she watched. Finally, Mrs. Amos said kind of soft, Teddy? Todd looked up, fell on his knees, and put his hands on his throat. He started huffing and puffing with his eyes bucking out of his head and his chest going up and down so hard that it looked like some kind of big animal was inside of him trying to bust out. This was my chance to get under the bed and pull the covers down so they couldn't see me. Mrs. Amos ran over to her son and fell on her knees. She put her arms around his shoulders. Teddy, Teddy boy, are you all right? She looked over to where I was peeking from under the bed. You little cure, what have you done to Teddy? Todd cuffed out. Oh, mother. He took in two jumbo breaths. I was only trying to help. He was sounding like a horse that had been run too hard in the winter. And, and look what has gotten me. Todd pointed at his jaw and Mrs. Amos and me could both see a perfect print in the shape of my hand welted on Todd's blubbery cheek. With one quick snatch, she had me from under the bed and out on the floor laying down next to Todd. 
How dare you? This is how you choose to repay me? Not only have you struck him, you have provoked his asthma. Todd said, I just tried to wake waken him to make sure he'd gone to the lavatory, mother. I was just trying to help. He aimed his finger dead at me and said, and look at him, mother. This one's got bed wetter written all over him. I'm not bragging when I say that I'm one of the best liars in the world, but I got to tell you, Todd was pretty doggone good. It seemed like he knew some of the same things I know, the same things I know I think of all the time and try to remember so I don't make the same mistake more than seven or eight times. Chucks, I've got so many of them memorized that I had to give them numbers, and it seemed like Todd knew number three of Bud Caldwell's rules and things for having a funner life and making a better liar out of yourself. Rules and things number three. If you got to tell a lie, make sure it's simple and easy to remember. Okay, now, based off of this interaction that Bud just had, it's clearly a big different one and from what we were experiencing in chapter one. You guys are now going to get into the first stop and drop of today, which is what does this interaction tell us about this new foster family? Okay, so make sure you are going back and using quoted evidence from the text to help you answer this question so that you guys can point out what this is telling us about the Amoses who Bud has to now live with and chat for his new foster family. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and get into the first stop and drive. All right, so welcome back to the discussion for the first stop and jot. So you guys are supposed to write down what does this interaction tell us about this new foster family. So right now, we know that we have Todd and we have Mrs. Amos coming into the room with Bud. Okay, so we know what happened do, during this interaction between, to, between Todd and Bud. Exactly. It seems like Todd was basically beating Bud up and Bud was trying to get away from him. Now. If we move on into the story, how did Todd, like, create this scenario to his mom? Like, what was he doing? Exactly. He was lying about what was going on and trying to say that he wanted to wake him up so he did not wet the bed. So this is on page six. So it says, look at him, mother. This one's got bed wetter written all over him. So clearly right now we're figuring out here that Todd lies to his mother a lot. And of course, Mrs. Amos is going to believe her son over Bud any day right now. Okay, so we are now getting into and getting into the family dynamic and what Bud has to live with right now. So of course we're going to get into more of this dynamic as we continue to read. Okay. And of course it says right here before we get into page seven. I'm not bragging when I say that I'm one of the best liars in the world, but I got to tell you, Todd was pretty doggone good. So it seems to us right now that Todd is clearly becoming a better liar than what Bud is achieving in his life so far. And he's trying to figure out how he's going to, su to survive this family. So right now, as we're moving on and we're still tracking these interactions, you guys are going to read page seven. So again, at the top, it tells you the page. And then, of course, go on to page eight, to the bottom of page eight. So it's, you need to stop at kind of a knot that I didn't know, the so bottom of page eight, and then stop. When you're done, you are going to go back to the Google form, and you guys are going to get into multiple choice number one when you are complete, okay? So go ahead and pause the video. Also, make sure you are writing in your notes on the side if you need to help you track the story so that you are not getting lost or confused about what's going on within this um, chapter right now. So go ahead, pause the video, and get started. All right, so welcome back from answering multiple choice number one. I'm going to read through the options again. Then we're going to flip back to the story to see which one was best supported from the text. All right, so multiple choice number one, why did Todd tell the lie about bedwetting? Because he, A, because he did not want to get in trouble for fighting with Bud. B, because he knew how much he hated bedwetters. C, because he thought his mom would think Bud wet the bed. Or D, because Todd actually wet the bed and he did not want to get caught. 
Now, let's go through these options through our text and see which one actually makes the most sense. Okay, so we were supposed to venture from page seven and then finish up. So basically what happened and why did this fight initially start? Exactly, Todd was sticking a pencil up Bud's nose and Bud clearly was getting very, very upset about this, okay? So it says right here on page seven, when I jerked up in bed and opened my eyes, Todd was standing next to me with a yellow pencil in his hand. He was looking at it like it was a thermometer and said, wow, you got all the way up to R. He turned the pencil toward me and crunched up against the headboard. I saw Ticonderoga printed on the yellow wood. So clearly right here, we can see that basically Todd stuck a pencil up Bud's nose. Bud was not happy about this. Then it continues on because Bud also didn't like the fact that he was being called Buddy. So right here it says, Todd laughed. I've never gotten in as deep as the N on any of you other little street urchins. I just might enjoy your stay here. Who knows what other things you could be number one in, Buddy? I already told him twice that my name was Bud, not Buddy. Okay? So right here is the initial start of why they were fighting. We know that Bud hits him afterwards because it says I swung as hard as I could at Todd's big balloon head somewhere between the time I threw my punch and the time it landed my fist came open and when my hand landed it made a pop like a .22 rifle going off Todd fell on the floor like he'd been cold caught he sputtered and muttered and felt the spot where I slapped him then a big smile came on his face and he stood up and started walking real slow toward me where I was on the bed he untied his rope and dropped him on the floor like he was ready to, ready to do some hard work. Okay, so just from right here, this is going to help us with our answer choices, right? So we can automatically eliminate which one, A, B, C, or D. Definitely D, because Todd didn't wet the bed. Okay, so now we have A, B, and C left because he did not want to get in trouble for fighting with Bud, because he knew how much he hated bedwetters, or C, because he thought his mom would think that Bud wet the bed. Now, if we were to go back to the text, we knew in this in this in this moment right here that Bud did not wet the bed, right? So we can automatically also eliminate C because he thought his mom would think Bud wet the bed. Because clearly he didn't. And Potentially B, too, because he knew how much he hated bedwetters. But the reason why Todd is lying is because he did not want to get in trouble with beating up new people in his mother's home. OK, so the new the correct answer is A. Realize this is coming from him being so excited to be able to beat a kid up. So Todd is excited right here. It says, then a big smile came on his face. So he's excited that, oh my gosh, like this kid just hit me. I'm going to hit him back and I can actually punch him and then make a big scenario out of it because that's what's happening right here. And then his mom walks in. And of course, that's when the lies start spilling out just to make it seem like he didn't do anything on purpose or he wasn't the person who started everything, okay? So again, answer A is correct. If you got that right, awesome. Make sure you're always going back to all pieces of the text. So realize in order for you to help answer this question, you needed to read from the, to the bottom of page eight and then also loop back up to where he initially said it to his mom so that you can understand why that was important. Okay, your job now is to continue to read the rest of the chapter. So page 9, 10, 11, and stop before chapter 3 at the bottom of 12. And then you're going to get into the final stop and jot. So we are still continuing to track these character interactions in order to learn more about them. So make sure you guys are doing that and writing down and jotting down notes on a piece of paper. And then after that, getting into this second stop and jot of how does Bud's rules help him survive his new family? Realize, 
when you have paragraph answers, you guys should be writing them in complete sentences as though this is a regular stop and jot or writing class. We see your responses, so don't be lazy with this point right here. Make sure you are creating good responses so that when you do have come back to that discussion piece, you, are, you can connect your answers and actually figure out if you are on the right track or not. So again, track the story, read to the bottom of page 12 before chapter three, and then get into the second stop and jot and come back for a discussion. So go ahead and pause the video and get started. All right, so welcome back from answering stop and jot number two, which was how does Bud's rules help him survive in his new family? Now, what is going on within the last piece of the chapter that makes him think of these rules? Right, so now Mr. Amos has come home and he's basically trying to make sure that he can stay in the house and not be sent back to the home. So he's gonna do everything in his power to not get in any more trouble and to basically be on their good side, especially because this was technically like the first day, okay? So realize the new rules that he is now giving us. So let's scroll down to rules and things number 118. Make sure you're getting there. Okay, it says, you have to give the adult something that they think they can use to hurt you by taking it away. That way, they might not take something away that you really do want unless they are crazy or real stupid. They won't take everything because if they did, they wouldn't have anything left to hold over your head to hurt you with later. What did they take from Bud in this moment? Right, they took his suitcase. So right now, they're using that as leverage in order for him to clearly be better and to not run, right, and not leave his family. Okay, so it says right here on page nine, right here it says, Mrs. Amos says, oh no, we shall hold on to his beloved valuables. She laughed. This will, this shall be our assurance that nothing comes up missing from the house and that this little animal is still here in the morning. He is far too attached to those treasures to go anywhere without them. So they're realizing that clearly the only way Bud is going to act correct or right or proper in their head is if they take his briefcase, which clearly has that one important thing, which is what? Right, that flyer with his father on it. And they don't want to give it away to Bud because they don't know what he would do while he has all of the things that he wants in his life right now with him. Okay, so this leads us to the question for the stop and jot of how does Bud's rules help him survive his new family? So. Clearly with these rules, this is getting him to make sure that he's lying correctly and to also apologize to let them hear what they want so that they don't come like, like wish him away or be mean to him and that he's on everyone's good side right now. So right here, it even states on page 10, Mrs. Amos was going to be the hardest because just like her ears were set to believe everything that came out of Todd's lips, they were set not to believe anything I said. And if I didn't lie good enough, she was going to use that strap on me. These Amoses might look like a bunch of cream puffs, but if she was anything like Todd, I bet she could pack a real wallop. And then of course, he's going on to apologize more and more and more. And then he's still going on with if you give me another chance, I promise I'll do a whole whole lot better. Please don't call the home. Please don't send me back. Shucks, going back to the home was just what I wanted to do, but I was being, but I was being just like Br'er, Br'er Rabbit in one of the books Mama used to read to me at night when he yelled out, "Please, Br'er Fox, don't throw me into the pricker patch, please, please." So this is where it leads into more of his rules where he needs to make his life more funner and make a better liar of yourself. So he's using these rules right now of life to his advantage and making sure that he is able to survive in this certain circumstance that he's in so that he doesn't get beat up by Todd and they don't send him back to the home. So he wants to stay right now. Okay. So now that we're done with chapter two, 
you guys are now going to get into the exit ticket for today. The exit ticket secret code is Crocs. So it's C R O C S. Crocs, all lowercase. Make sure you're spelling it correctly. All right. Making sure you are still tracking and, and writing down any questions. Maybe even predict what you think will happen next in chapter three before you actually read it. All right. So get into that exit ticket. Make sure you're writing down any questions that you have for chapters one and two so far and any things that you need for clarity and enjoy your day. All right. Bye.